Hello everybody, welcome back to the seaside. Um, did a little bit of a challenge today, uh, it's something that I've been trying to set up for a bit, but I think this will work out quite well. It's basically, will the Mark 1 Canon 5D, or the original one that came out, the 5D Classic, still hold up these days against things like the M1 Mark 1 and then ultimately the OM1. But just show you around the cameras and see what we've got. So there we go, the Canon 5D Mark 1, the first of Canon's sort of compact pro line cameras that they came out with in 2005. It's a heavy old beast, but for what it's got, full frame, 13 megapixel sensor on there, doesn't have any live view or anything like that. It's a very poor, tiny screen, standard mirror box, because it is actually a digital SLR, but what it does give you is some astonishing results. And apologies for the sunlight, but it has literally just gone past sunrise. But, go take a few shots, and rather than actually showing you what they are, I'm literally just going to do a couple of shots with each of the cameras, and I'll let you decide which ones are actually from which camera. But let's get some shots off. So the 5D Mark I was fairly revolutionary at the time. There'd been nothing really in that sort of level on the market from any of the other manufacturers, it basically gave Canon the massive edge to actually get into the prosumer market and get essentially what became an industry standard established. Um, even today, it is an astonishing camera, built like an absolute tank. It doesn't have a lot of weather sealing on it, but it's still built, full magnesium body, and gives you some amazing results from what's essentially very, very old technology. Like I said, the thing is no lightweight. It's 810 grams just for the body. I mean, I run the, uh, the L-Series 24-105 lens on it, which is another 600 odd grams just on its own. Um, so yeah, you're hefting around quite a size. And certainly if you're doing sort of a day shoot, it does tend to tell a little bit. You know you're carrying the weight around, which is something really sort of, that you have to be sort of a bit mindful, especially if you sort of stuff from the uh, tendonitis like I do, of what you're actually taking out. But, let's move on to the next camera, shall we? And so next up is the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark I. Now this was Olympus's first venture into the pro-grade system. And compared to the 5D, it's quite lightweight. This comes in at 497 grams. With the 14 to 42 lens that I've got on there, it's not much above 500. And you can drop that in a pocket and run around with it all day long. It's not a problem at all. Um, big difference you do get with this as well, because it's a mirrorless system, you don't have any issues with the uh, live view or anything like that, so you've got a full screen actually on the back which tilts rather than articulates, so that's quite nice, and you've actually got with the electronic viewfinder almost everything that you need to hand through the viewfinder as well. So, a bit of a different system to the 5D, but will it take any sort of shot sort of similar to it? Um, Get a few shots off now and we'll find out. Like I said, this actually comes with a tilting screen, so you can have to tilt that out and turn away from it. It does actually get in the way on the tripod, so it's not perfectly usable. Very similar to the Nikon Z series, um, so you get that sort of effect from it. Um, but it's a big improvement over the 5D, which has got a tiny little screen, doesn't have any live view, it's very poor quality as well. Um, the difference that you do find with the mirrorless system as well is obviously everything that's on the screen is duplicated in the viewfinder. That's very handy, especially if you're sort of doing shoots where it's in bright conditions and you need literally to have as much information as you can to hand and it's a bit too bright for the screen. So yeah, that's one little nice little feature that uh, is on there which definitely does give it an edge over the 5D. So that's the Mark 1s. They were the first of their line. And so the Canon, that was groundbreaking. Before then, anything full frame, in digital SLR, that was the big bodied stuff, so absolutely massive things. That was the first one to put it into something that was more sort of handheld and you could take out and about with you, sort of in more of a sort of a general sort of going out trekking sort of look rather than having to have a massive bag with all the extras and stuff like that that came with it. So, yeah, it was groundbreaking. Spec wise, when you look at it today, it's pathetic. There's nothing to it at all. Baby little sensor on it and without any of the features that normally you'd expect doesn't do video, doesn't have live view, 
very very tiny screen menus are horrible on it so yeah as far as what we expect today a big difference EM1 Mark 1 that one again kind of groundbreaking you got a pro level camera in a very very tiny format um, which is something that really did change things around it gave Olympus their sort of first true pro grade camera with full absolute sort of weather sealing on it it's splash proof it's freeze proof the lenses that they came out with to actually go with it they were also absolutely amazing even sort of the basic lens that I've got on it there the 14 to 42 it's crisp it's clean and it gives you great results that's the thing with the Mark 4 third system it really does seem to give you much better results from a smaller package than you generally expect yes you're not going to get the dynamic range that you are from a full frame camera but you're getting portability you're getting quality and this is the sort of stuff that you can blow up to really big sizes and it will still hold up fine and so now we move on to their latest camera now it might have a badge of Olympus but just down there is OM system this is the OM1 this is the new flagship that they came out with in February 2022 and essentially they rewrote the book on what they were doing with it so this is a much chunkier camera than the m ones it's got a lot more feature set the buttons are slightly different but again it's all customizable and it holds with the Olympus standard where you can actually sort of basically set almost any button to anything you fancy um, they named it the OM1. It's OM Systems' first camera. And they really did pull out all the stops. It's chunkier than the EM1 Mark 1. The EM1 Mark 2, which I'm actually filming on now, that's got a slightly bigger grip, but the general form factor is the same as the Mark 1. Um, the OM1, they actually increased the size just a bit. And it just makes it a little bit better in hand, especially going from full frame like I was over to that. It makes a big difference. It's much more comfortable to handhold and it gives a lovely feel in the hand. There's a lot of slightly different features in there as well, uh, which you can't really see until you start to get into it. The speed of the processor, the new Truepic X processor, massively quick, massively powerful. And as the camera actually came out, they said there's a lot of capacity to actually increase the feature set as things go along. So expecting more updates as that comes in. Uh, but Weight-wise, you're looking at 599 grams. So we've jumped a good 100 grams from where we were with the A1 Mark 1. We're still well below what the original 5D was. And the 5D line essentially just got heavier and heavier as it sort of went on. Obviously, they've moved now onto the mirrorless systems, but that's a completely different ball game. But the A1 1, brand new sensor. Now the A1 Mark 2 that I'm filming on now, that's got a 20 megapixel sensor in there, which is a nice sensor good range and lovely resolution. The only ones is a backlit um, sensor that's made by Sony. It's moved the game on massively. It's such a crisp sensor. Low light is not a problem anymore. There's, you don't suffer from the issues with bad dynamic range. It's got all that there. It's not what you'd expect from a Micro Four Thirds camera. Now, system, well, stood here at the moment, massively sort of blown out with highlights, um, the sun's blaring straight up, there's not a cloud in the sky, but the only one can call things back and get quite nice images where you wouldn't normally expect it to come out. Um, as far as sort of advancements in technology goes, this is basically OM system saying we can do this. OM system essentially, they bought the camera division of Olympus, that was their sort of set up and they needed to do something because as soon as that happened Olympus are dead it's all gone Mark four thirds is no more and they needed to make sure that you know so they put mines at rest and came up with something fantastic and that's what they did um, there's a couple of little quirks with it but it's more to do with me moving from full frame into Mark four thirds than anything else yeah so after going from full frame into a Mark four third system there's a couple of little bits that I needed to sort of get into and work some bits out. I mean, for me, it's the first real venture into full mirrorless system as well, where I've got high speed shooting, I've got the quality that uh, I wasn't used to with using the DSLRs through the viewfinder. Um, the EM1 Mark 1 
and the M1 Mark II. They basically use the same viewfinder, so it's a relatively low resolution screen in comparison to the sensor. It's good enough to compose with and you get a good idea of what you're doing, but the OM1 certainly has a lot more resolution in that, the screen and the viewfinder. So there you go. Quick rundown, three groundbreaking cameras. They're all essentially Mark 1s. You've got the Canon 5D Mark 1, the first prosumer line of a full frame in a compact body. The M1 Mark 1, Olympus's first foray into full professional gear with full weather ceiling and essentially professional level features. And the OM system, OM1. The new line that's sort of moving things forward. It's changing the forecast of what Mark 4 thirds is likely to be in the future. And I think it's a very good thing. But I'll pop some shots up now. Like I say, I'm not going to actually mark up anything as to what was taken with what, but see if you can guess. Um, drop us a comment down below. Let me know what, which ones you think are from each of them. I'll actually sort of label each of the uh, the pictures as well, so you've got some idea of, to sort of differentiate between them. But if you've liked the video, please do hit a thumbs up. And if you look not subscribed already, please do hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out no end. But I'll put the pictures up now. Drop us a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll actually sort of I'll update the description and pop a little video out uh, later in the week just say which one's which but uh, yeah thanks for watching we'll see you again next time